Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm sorry the review is a little late this week. Um, no normally, I try to get these up by Friday night, but I was feeling kind of under the weather the last few days, and if I made the video then, it just wouldn't have been very good. So I figured I'd just wait a little while till I was feeling better. Anyway, terrific impact this week. I enjoyed this show more than I have any impact in quite a while. And that's really strange, actually, because I understand they had to do a lot of last-minute rewrites because of all the injuries on the roster. Anyway, I thought the first 30 minutes of this show were as good as anything we've seen on Impact in a long time. I liked Hernandez coming out to confront the main event mafia from out of nowhere, and at first glance it might seem like the writers just threw away his title shot and made it look like nothing, but with the way Hernandez completely dominated Sting for most of that match, I don't see how they cannot give him a rematch at some point. And this could also be the impetus for LAX to get involved with the front line, which could really help some of those guys get over in this feud because people love LAX. Um, I thought the beatdown of Homicide and Hernandez and, uh, and AJ, and then the, the build-up to 3D and the return of Brother Ray was great, and the crowd was so hot for that segment. And I loved, loved Brother Ray's promo on Sting. It was a lot like AJ's promo from some weeks back where he pointed out what a huge hypocrite Sting had become. But this was even better because this time, Sting didn't just cheat to win a match. This time he stood by and did nothing while Brother Ray got beaten half to death. And Brother Ray tore him apart on the mic. I mean, seriously, if you missed that promo, go to TNA's YouTube page and watch it because it was a classic. Um, as for 3D challenging Angle and staying to a match it against all odds, um, when I read the spoilers, I was completely against this because nobody is going to think that Brother Ray or Brother Devon are going to win the World Heavyweight title. I mean, that's just stupid. But... It looks like the writers anticipated that because I'll be damned if they didn't pull this off. I mean, the way they executed this was really smart because people might just kind of roll their eyes at, at um, you know, Ray and Devon trying to win the world title. But I think the writers can get people really excited about the idea of Sting and Kurt Angle shitting bricks because a seriously pissed off Team 3D is coming after them with blood in their mouths. So it's more about 3D getting revenge than it is about the world title. I mean, this whole segment was just awesome. Now, another thing that came off great was the main event. And at first, I was pissed off because they advertised AJ versus Kurt Angle and then decided to take that away from us and give us Scott Steiner instead. But AJ managed to pull a solid match out of Steiner. I mean, he looked really strong kicking out of that lead pipe shot. And then the Petey Williams run-in, I thought, came off perfectly. And they made his return look like a big deal. And it was a great capper to the show because in the first segment, the main event mafia are so confident, and they're all smug, thinking they'll just take out Foley, take out AJ, and that'll be the end of it. But then, like, but then everything just completely falls apart, and the frontline guys get over on them huge. And uh, also, we had the big quote-unquote payoff for the Sarah Palin thing, which, if nothing else, means that we've finally seen the end of those god-awful skits. Thank Christ. Um, apparently the whole thing was a big scam uh, by Taylor and Rock. The Taylor and Roxy cooked up to get back at the beautiful people for being terrible representatives of the Knockouts division. Now, call me crazy, but I did not hate this. I mean, even though the dumping sewage on someone angle is nothing new. I mean, WWE has done that stuff quite a few times, but I think we were at a point where the stuff Taylor and Roxy said really needed to be said because it showed that the writers were actually aware that those issues existed. I mean, for what seems like months now, there's been a lot, of, um, a lot of complaints, a lot of criticism from pundits and fans and everyone, that all this crap they've been doing with the beautiful people has made the Knockouts division look more like the WWE Divas. You know, the Sarah Palin thing, the beauty pageant. And that's not why people got interested in the Knockouts in the first place. It was because they were having great matches that completely blew away anything that the, that, that the Divas were delivering. And after Scott Demore left, after Gail Kim left, then little by little, they started getting away from that. Especially recently with Rock Khan and Christy Hemme. And it was really cool that they basically came out and said, yeah, we know this is an issue and we're acknowledging it. The thing is, I'm not really sure how effective it was. I mean, the announcers sold it like the beautiful people were getting what they deserved for all the crap they've been pulling all this time. But that didn't make a whole lot of sense because Velvet and Angelina have been treated like the biggest jobbers in the division for a long time now. I mean, they lost to Gail Kim, they lost to Taylor, they lost to ODB, they lost to Christy Hemi, all in the last few months. And 
I mean, this, this did get a good reaction from the crowd, so it wasn't like a flop or anything, but basically what Taylor and Roxy did was take two heel jobbers, make them look like complete idiots, and then humiliate them on TV. And I don't know how, I, I really don't know how effective that was since the beautiful people really had no heat to lose at this point. I mean, can, can you imagine the pop they would this would have gotten if they had punked out Awesome Kong like that? That would have blown the roof off the place. So, yeah, I like I liked the message that they sent with this, this thing, but uh, I'm just kind of struggling with the relevance. I mean, I am interested to see what happens next, though. I mean, they had the, the tease of Velvet and Angelina signing those official-looking documents without reading them first, so I assume something's going to happen with that. Um, you know, they'll probably have a match of some kind, maybe have Daphne get involved. Uh, Moose was cleared to wrestle recently, so they might bring her back and throw her in there, too, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, plus, we also had a knockout, the knockouts in a six-woman tag rematch from Genesis. Um, I'm glad they did this because it gave the women a chance to redeem themselves after the Genesis match was not that good. Now, they had a better match this time. It wasn't anything fantastic, but it was better, despite Raka Khan continuing to stink up the place. Um, they had Roxy get the pin on Raka Khan, which was exactly the finish that should have happened, because ODB got the pin at the pay-per-view, so Roxy needed to get the pin here. They've, you know, they've only got three baby faces on the roster right now, so they need to keep all of them looking strong until they can get some new people in there. And Raka Khan just flat-out sucks. All right, she should always be the one to do the job when the heels are booked to lose because she is just, just terrible. So, anyway, those were the major points of the show. A lot of good stuff this week. Once again, the trend continues that we're getting a little more time devoted to the matches, which is very good. Now, the tag match, knockouts match, both got good time, and the main event went about 15 minutes. So, that's a big plus. My only real complaints this week are that we're still getting that really huge gap between the night between 9:15 and 10 p.m. where there's practically no wrestling and it's all talk 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 and they absolutely need to format these things better so there isn't that huge space in between the matches. And my other complaint is that the Motor City Machine Guns were not on the show. I mean they had an amazing show stealing match at the pay-per-view and Mike Tenay said history was made when Alex Shelley won the X Division title for the first time. Now I I do understand that they were kept off the show on purpose because Shelly's back is hurting him apparently and they wanted to give him uh, a little time to rest up but if they weren't wrestling they needed to at least come out and cut a promo or something because it was absolutely wrong to just leave them off the show entirely after the performance they put on at Genesis but you know I, I you know as I understand it I mean they had to do major rewrites after the pay-per-view they were probably really scrambling to do that and they had a lot of people injured, and, you know, these things happen sometimes. And and the guns will be in action next Thursday, so we've got that to look forward to. So anyway, a uh, really good impact this week. Um, I actually recorded the show and went back and watched the first half hour a couple of times. I mean, seriously, you need to watch that opening segment if you haven't seen it yet. Brother Ray's promo alone got me more excited about, about Against All Odds than I was for Genesis. So, you know, hopefully they can keep that momentum going next week. Later.